Welcome to Global Marketing. In this chapter, we will be looking at branding and product decisions. Specifically, we will be looking at brand and product concepts, local, international and global brands, product decision issues, attitudes towards foreign products, strategic alternatives and new product issues. The product P of marketing mix is at the heart of the challenges and opportunities facing global companies today. Management must develop product and brand policies and strategies that are sensitive to marketing needs, competition and companies' ambitions and resources on a global scale. Effective global marketing often entails finding a balance between payoffs from extensively adapting products and brands to local market preferences and the benefits that come from concentrating company resources on relatively standardized global products and brands. Basic Product Concepts A product's tangible attributes can be assessed in physical terms such as weight, dimensions or material used. Consider for example a flat panel TV with a LCD screen that measures 42 inches across. The unit weighs 100 pounds, is 4 inches thick and has a tuner capable of receiving high definition TV signals over the air. These tangible physical features translate into benefits that enhance the enjoyment of watching prime TV and movies on DVRs. Intangible product attributes including status associated with product ownership, a manufacturer's service commitments and a brand's overall reputation are also important. When shopping for a new TV set, for example, many people want the best. They want the TV loaded with features, tangible product elements, as well as one that is cool and makes a status statement in tangible product elements. A product is a good service or idea. It has tangible as well as intangible attributes. Product classifications Products can be divided into consumer goods and industrial goods. Buyer orientation A frequently used framework for classifying product distinguishes between consumer and industrial goods. Consumers and industrial goods in turn can further be classified on the basis of criteria such as buyer orientation. So buyer orientation comprises of the amount of effort expended, level of risk and buyer involvement whereas Buyer orientation framework consists of attributes such as convenience, preference, shopping, and specialty. Brands Customers integrate all their experiences of observing, using, and consuming a product with everything they hear and read about it. The essence of brand exists in the mind. Brands are intangible. However, companies develop logos, distinctive packaging, and other communication devices to provide visual representation of their brands. A logo can take a variety of forms, starting with the brand name itself. Brand is the bundle of images and experiences in a consumer's mind. It is a promise made by a particular company about a particular product. It is a quality certification. It is the differentiation between competing products and the sum of impressions about a brand is brand image. Brands. This slide illustrates the information about product and brands comes from a variety of sources and cues, including advertising, publicity, sales personnel, and packaging. Perceptions of service after the sale, price, and distribution can also take into account. Brand equity. The value of global mega brands such as Marlboro or Coca-Cola runs in tens of billions of dollars. Warren Buffet, the legendary American investor who heads Berkshire Hathaway, asserts that the global power of brands such as Coca-Cola and Gillette permits the companies that own them to set a protective moat around their economic castles. As Buffett once explained, the average company, by contrast, does battle every day without any such means of protection. The protection often yields added profit because the owner of powerful brand names can typically command higher prices of their products than can owners of lesser brands. In other words, the strongest global brands have tremendous brand equity. Some of the benefits of brand equity include Greater loyalty, less vulnerability to marketing actions, less vulnerability to marketing crisis, larger profit margins, 
more inelastic consumer response to price increases more elastic consumer response to price decreases increased marketing communication effectiveness local products and brands products and brands can be broken down into three categories there are local international and global the next few slides will illustrate the difference between these categories in developing countries global brands are sometimes perceived as overpowering local ones growing national pride can result in social backlash that favors local products and brands in china a local tv set manufacturer Chang Hong Electric Appliances has built its share of Chinese market from 6% to more than 22% by cutting prices and using patriotic advertisement themes such as let Chang Hong hold the great flag of revitalizing our national industries. Coca-Cola has developed several branded drink products for sale only in Japan including a non-carbureted ginseng flavored beverage, a blended tea and a Lactia brand fermented milk drink. Local products and brands are brands that have achieved success in single national market. They represent the lifeblood of domestic companies. Entrenched local products or brands can be a significant competitive hurdle to global companies. International products and brands. International products and international brands are often in several markets in a particular region. For example, there are a number of euro products and euro brands that are offered in Europe but not in the rest of the world. International products and brands are offered in several markets in a particular region. For example, Honda five-door hatchback autos is known as Fit in Japan and Jazz in Europe. Global products and brands. Global products meet the wants and needs of a global market and are offered in all world regions. Global brands have the same name and similar image and positioning throughout the world. According to the former Gillette CEO, a multinational has operations in different countries. A global company views the world as a single country. We know Argentina and France are different, but we treat them as the same. We sell them the same products, we use the same production methods, we have the same corporate policies, we even use the same advertising in a different language, of course. As this quote implies, companies such as Gillette enjoy several benefits and advantages that derive from creating global products and utilizing global branding. These include economies of scale associated with creating a single ad campaign for the world and advantages of executing a single brand strategy. All global companies are trying to increase the visibility of their brands, especially in key markets such as United States and China. Examples include Philips with its sense of simplicity, global image advertising and Siemens recent recent be inspired campaign. Global brand characteristics Worldwide, consumers, corporate buyers, governments, activists, and other groups associate global brands with three characteristics. Consumers use these characteristics as a guide when making purchase decisions. Quality signal. Global brands compete fiercely with each other to provide world-class quality. A global brand name differentiates product offerings and allows marketeers to charge premium prices. Global myth. Global brands are symbols of cultural ideal. As noted earlier, marketeers can use global consumer cultural positioning to communicate a brand's global identity and link the identity to aspirations in any part of the world. Social responsibility. Consumers evaluate companies and brands in terms of how they address social problems and how they conduct business. Global products and brands. Global brands are not the same as global products. For example, the iPod is a brand whereas MP3 player is a product. Brand strategies. Combination or tiered branding allows marketers to leverage a company's reputation while developing a distinctive identity for for a line of products. For example, the Sony's Walkman. Co-branding features two or more companies or product brands. For example, Intel Inside. Properly implemented, co-branding can foster consumer loyalty and allow companies to achieve synergy. 
However, co-branding can also confuse consumers and dilute brand equity. The approach works most effectively when the products involved complement each other. Credit card companies were the pioneers and today it is possible to use cards to earn frequent flyer miles and discounts on automobiles. Brand Extension Brand acts as an umbrella for new products. For example, the Virgin Group. The brand has been built on Richard Branson's ability to exploit weaknesses in competitors' consumer service skills, as well as a flair for self-promotion. Branson's business philosophy is that brands are built around reputation, quality, innovation, and the price rather than image. Although Branson is intent on establishing Virgin as the British brand of New Millennium, some industry observers wonder if the brand has been spread too thin. World's most valuable brands Some of the world's most valuable brands include Coca-Cola, IBM, Microsoft, Toyota, Sony, Apple, Samsung, and a few others. Global Brand Development Questions to ask when management seeks to build a global brand. Does this move fit the company and or its market? Will anticipated scale economies materialize? How difficult will it be to develop a global brand team? Can a single brand be imposed on all markets successfully? Global Brand Leadership Companies should use a priority on creating strong brands in all markets through global brand leadership, using organizational structures, processes, and cultures to allocate brand building Using organizational structures, processes, and cultures to allocate brand building resources globally to create global synergies and to develop a global brand strategy that coordinates and leverages country brand strategies. This slide and the next slide offers 8 suggestions for managers that are seeking to develop global brand leadership. Create a compelling value proposition. Think about all elements of brand identity and select names, marks, and symbols that have the potential for globalization. Research the alternatives of extending a national brand versus adopting a new brand identity globally. Develop a company-wide communication system. Develop a consistent planning process. Assign specific responsibility for managing brand issues. Execute brand building strategies. Harmonize unravel confusion and eliminate complexity. Local versus global products and brands, a need-based approach. The essence of marketing is finding needs and filling them. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a staple of sociology and psychology courses, provides a useful framework for understanding how and why local products and brands can be extended beyond home country borders. Maslow hypothesized that people's desires can be arranged into a hierarchy of five needs. As the individual fulfills needs at each level, he or she progresses to a higher level. At the most basic level of human existence, physiological and safety needs must be met. People need food, clothing and shelter, and a product that meets these basic needs has potential for globalization. Mid-level needs in the hierarchy include self-respect, self-esteem, and esteem of others. These social needs, which can create a powerful internal motivation deriving demand for status-oriented products, cut across the various stages of country development. Rolex, Louis Vuitton are just a few of the global brands that consumers buy in effort to satisfy self-esteem needs. Some consumers flaunt their wealth by buying expensive products and brands that others will notice. Such behavior is referred to as conspicuous consumption or luxury badging. Helmia Schutter has proposed a modified hierarchy to explain the needs and wants of Asian consumers. Although the two lower needs are the same as the traditional hierarchy, the three highest levels emphasize social needs. Affiliation needs in Asia are satisfied when an individual has been accepted by a group. Conformity with group norms becomes a key force driving consumer behavior. For example, when a cool new cell phone hits the market, every teenager who wants to fit in buys one.
Knowing this, managers at Japanese companies develop local products specially designed to appeal to teens. The next level is admiration, a higher level need that can be satisfied through acts that command respect within a group. At the top of the Asian hierarchy is status, the esteem of society as a whole. In part, attainment of higher status is character driven. However, the quest of status also leads to luxury badging. Support for Shota's contention that status is the highest ranking need in Asian hierarchy can be seen in the geographic breakdown of the $35 billion global luxury goods market. Fully 20% of this industry sales are generated in Japan alone, with another 22% of sales occurring in the rest of the Asia Pacific region. Nearly half of all sales revenue of Italy's Gucci Group are generated in Asia. Country of origin as brand element One of the facts of life in global marketing is that perceptions about the attitude towards particular countries often extend to product and brands known to originate in those countries. Such perceptions contribute to the country of origin effect. They become part of the brand's image and contribute to brand equity. This is particularly true for automobiles, electronics, fashion, beverages, recorded music, and certain other product categories. Perceptions and attitudes about a product's origin can be positive or negative. On the positive side, as one marketing expert has pointed out, German is synonymous with quality engineering, Italian is synonymous with style, and French is synonymous with fashion. The English tea, the French perfumes, the Chinese silk, the Italian leather, the Japanese electronics. These are all very famous and their country of origin plays a big role. Packaging In many instances, packaging is an integral element of product-related decisions. Packaging is an important consideration for products that are shipped long distances to market in all parts of the world. Nestle has packaging teams throughout the world that are required to contribute packaging improvement suggestions on a quarterly basis. Implemented changes include new plastic lid to make ice cream container easier to open, slightly deeper indentations in the flat end of candy wrappers in Brazil that make them easier to rip open, and deeper notches on single serve packets of Nescafe in China. Nestle also asked suppliers to find a type of glue to make the clicking sound better when customers snap open a tube of Smarties brand chocolate candies. Consumer packaged goods refers to products whose packaging is designed to protect or contain the product during shipping at retail or point of use. Eco packaging is key because package designers must address environmental issues. It offers communication cues that provide consumers with a basis for making a purchase decision. Labeling One hallmark of modern global marketplace is the abundance of multi-language labeling that appears on many products. In today's self-service retail environment, product labels may be designed to attract attention, to support a product's positioning, and to help persuade consumers to buy. Today, virtually all food products sold in the United States and all over the world must present information regarding nutrition, for example, calories and fat content, and serving size is a standard format. The use of certain terms such as light and natural is also restricted. Labeling provides consumers with various types of information. Regulations differ by country regarding various products. Health warnings on tobacco products, for instance, American Automobile Labeling Act clarifies the country of origin and final assembly point. European Union requires labels on all food products that include ingredients from genetically modified crops. Aesthetics Aesthetic elements that are deemed appropriate, attractive, and appealing in one's home country may be perceived differently elsewhere. In some cases, a standardized color can be used in all countries. Examples include the distinctive yellow color on Caterpillar's earth-moving equipment. In other instances, color choices should be changed in response to local perceptions. For example, the red color in South Africa refers to mourning. In India, it refers to purity. In China, it has a meaning of celebration and good luck. 
In Russia, it represents communism and in the West, it represents excitement. Similarly, yellow color in China represents nourishing. In Egypt, it represents mourning. In India, it represents the merchants. And in the Western country, it represents hazards and warning and sometimes hope too. So you can see that colors mean different things in different cultures. Global marketeers must understand the importance of visual aesthetics. Aesthetic styles, degree of complexity found on the label differ around the world. Product warranties. Express warranty is a written guarantee that assures the buyer is getting what they paid for or provides a remedy in case of the product failure. Warranties can be used as a competitive tool. Extend, adapt, create. Strategic alternatives in global marketing. Extension is the offering of product virtually unchanged in markets outside of home country. Adaptation is the changing of elements of design, function and packaging according to the needs of the different country markets. And creation is the developing of new products for the world market. Global product planning, strategic alternatives. Extension strategies are employed by companies in the international, global and transnational stages of development. The critical difference is one of execution and mindset. In an international company, for example, the extension strategy reflects an ethnocentric orientation and the assumption that all markets are alike. A global company such as Gillette does not fall victim to such assumptions. The company's geocentric orientation allows it to thoroughly understand its markets and consciously take advantage of similarities in the world market. Likewise, a multinational executive in a global company has sensitized himself or herself to actual rather than assumed differences between markets. Strategy 1. Dual Extension In dual extension, we use the same product and the same communication strategy to a different market and it is very common in B2B businesses. Strategy 2. Product Extension Communication Adaptation here, the same product is offered but with a different communication in a different market. Low cost, because the product is unchanged, communication is adapted. Strategy 3. Product adaptation, communication extension. Here, a different product is offered with the same communication. Many automobile companies use this, for example, Ford or Cadillac. They want to sell automobiles outside the US and will adapt to local market requirements. Strategy 4. Dual Adaptation. Here a different product is offered with different communication in a different market. It combines local market conditions recognized in Strategy 2 and 3. Product Invention. Strategy 5. It is important to reach mass markets in less industrialized nations and certain segments in industrialized countries. For example, hand-cranked radios for areas with no electricity, Total Toothpaste by Colgate uses global benefit segmentation. How to choose a strategy? Two errors that management makes in choosing a strategy. NIH, not invented here syndrome, means that managers ignore the advancements of subsidiaries overseas. Managers impose policies upon subsidiaries because they assume what is right for consumers in one market is right in every market. How to choose a strategy? In order to choose a strategy, the product itself, defined in terms of functions or needs, serves as a starting point for formulating strategy. The market is defined in terms of conditions under which the product is used, preferences of potential consumers and ability to buy the product. And strategy also depends on adaptation and manufacturing costs the company will incur. This slide sums up the section regarding choosing a product communication strategy. It is important to note that only after analysis of product market fit and of company capabilities and costs can executives choose the most profitable strategy. New Products in Global Marketing It is important to pursue opportunities in competitive arenas of global marketplace. We must focus on one or only a few businesses. The active involvement of senior management is necessary. The ability to recruit and retain best employees will play a big role. 
and understanding the importance of speed in bringing product to market will again play a big role in introducing new products in global markets. Identifying new product ideas. The starting point of an effective worldwide new product program is an information system that seeks new product ideas from all potentially useful sources. These ideas are then subject to relevant screening and decision centers within the organizations. Ideas can come from many sources including customers, suppliers, competitors, company salespeople, distributors and agents, subsidiary executives, headquarter executives, documentary sources, for example information service reports and publications, and finally actual first-hand observations of market environment. The diagram on the slide the diagram on this slide illustrates the continuum that new products will fall into and the amount of learning that consumers will have to go through in order to use the product. Continuous innovation. Continuous innovation is the least disrupting influence on established consumption patterns. It requires less R&D and the example of this could be a faster computer or a mobile phone. Dynamically continuous innovations. They have some disrupting influence on established consumption patterns, require less learning and is less disruptive. For example, Gillette Sensor Razor brings new technology for an unchanged category, that is wet shaving. Discontinuous innovations. They require new consumption patterns and the creation of previously unknown products. They represent a break from the past, for example, the VCRs or emails. The International New Product Department. A high volume of information flow is required to scan for new product opportunities and considerable effort is subsequently required to screen these opportunities to identify candidates for product development. The best organizational design for addressing these requirements is a new product department. Managers in such departments engage in several activities. First, they ensure that all relevant information sources are continuously tapped for new product ideas. Second, they screen these ideas to identify candidates for investigation. Third, they investigate and analyze selected new product ideas. Finally, they ensure that the organization commits resources to the most likely new product candidates and is continuously involved in an orderly program of new product introduction and development on a worldwide basis. Some questions to consider here are, how big is the market of this product at various prices? What are the likely competitive moves in response to our activity? Can we market the product through existing structure? Can we source the product at a cost that will yield sufficient profits? Does product fit our strategic development plan? Testing new products. When do you test new product? Whenever a product interacts with human, mechanical or chemical elements because there is potential for a surprising and unexpected incompatibility, then testing becomes crucial. Tests could simply be observing the product being used within the market. And of course, there are more advanced and scientific methods of testing products too. This marks the end of this unit. Thank you.